To the rain goes, people see rainbows. But I see rainbows. After the war, Butlins and later Pontins holiday camps were thriving, offering entertainment and a social atmosphere. For twins, Peter and Paul, the holiday spirit was infectious, and Peter remembers it well. Deep in roses, walking in the sunshine of your love. Back when we were kids, we used to have a lot of holidays with our parents and um, they used to enjoy holiday camps and that's perhaps how we got in, into the holiday camp thing because we love watching all the entertainment going on there. For two natural performers, it wasn't long before they took to the stage themselves and they attracted the attention of one member of the audience in particular. Fred Pontin was there, wasn't he? Fred Pontin was there, and that, that evening he um, called us over and said, I quite enjoyed what you did then. Would you two guys like to come and work for me? And we said, yes. So he said, well, get yourself down to Breen Sands in Somerset. That was his he first said, That was his first camp. Holiday camp. <laughs> Gave us his blue jackets, and virtually we, we started it from there. We used to do these sing-alongs in the bar, <laughs> and every night we used to sing on the stage, Good Night Campus. Oh, good, good Night, night Campus, yeah, see you in the morning, yeah. It was good times, enjoyed it. The twins worked in camps in the UK for nine years, but everything changed in the early 1960s when cheaper air travel opened up holidays abroad to the masses. Fred Pointon suddenly called us into his office one day and said that I am going to open uh, a holiday village in Mallorca. Would you be interested in running it for me there? And, and at that point we thought, well, this, this sounds fantastic. You know, not too many people were going abroad then. And really, at that time, we didn't really know what we were going to go into. For many, it was the first time they'd left the UK, and the thrill of air travel and fear of the unknown were either exhilarating or terrifying. Vacation, lots of fun. When, uh, when the, the guests first arrived in Kalamazoo, it was all their first time ever abroad. It was our first time abroad as well, so we were a bit scared, because they were dressed at the airports um, in, in suits and ties. But it's only because it was the first time for people, it's yeah. only natural, isn't it? That used maybe to the British climate. And they suddenly realised it was going to be too hot, so they're completely and utterly dressed wrong. In the early days, the accommodation was basic, but Fred Pontin knew that having plenty of entertainment would give customers more than enough to think about. The first morning we woke up, because Fred Pontin was there, he said, I want to see you boys up early and get something going on the terrace for these guests. I said, well, they have probably just only just arrived. Will they want something? Yeah, yeah, I want them to see them doing something. So we've got them doing skittles and things like that. We used to arrange um, different events on during the day. There was football matches on the beach, games on the beach, darts, tournaments. Um, and of course, during the day, there was all the water skiing going on at the same time. Evening-wise, you used to do various competitions, uh, the James Bond event, the Miss, Miss Continental. It was only him and I to look after this 150 people at first during the lot. Because it started going so well with us at um, Mallorca, all the other little villages on the island we started coming over and well, sort of pinch our ideas, really, what, what we used to do, and then they started doing it. We were the first ones to get entertainment going in Mallorca. It all went very well, and slowly it built up and up and up that village, and it ended up with over a thousand people every week turning up at the airports. We had a dance in the holiday. Package holidays abroad became all the rage. By the end of the decade, more than 2.7 million Brits were packing their suitcases and heading for the sun. But not everyone knew what to expect. Suntan lotions weren't heard of then. 
It was just oils people use on their face. They used to use oil and vinegar oil as a suntan lotion. And salt. And salt and things that might make them browner. So we had to tell people, do be careful of the sunshine. They weren't used to the sort of food, although it's very good, the food, but they, there was a lot of olive oil put onto it. A lot of them used to get the Spanish tummy quite a bit, like, you know, but, but they, 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 after the first week, they just all sort of got used to it. And when people actually left, who was taken back on, back on the coach to Palmer Airport, they used to be actually crying. People. Oh, oh, bye bye, Peter. Bye bye, Paul. That's such, such a lovely time. <laughs> oh, don't worry. We'll see you, see you next year. See you next year. They so say, What do you miss out here most? And you say, We miss sausages and bacon. Or when we come out next year, we'll bring you some sausages and bacon out for you. I said, Oh, yeah, okay. That'd be lovely. And they did. The following year, I used to come out with bacon underneath their arms. And they've been holding it there. It was more or less cooked by the time they got to us. Everybody had a really good time, we had a good time, and it was never regretted one moment of it, and no. it was fantastic, the whole thing. No regrets. No regrets. No, no regrets. <laughs> All my bags are packed, I'm ready to go. I'm